Bible says, I just want to read for our scripture reading for this morning. Be coming from Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. Amen. Put the screen there. Amen. He found it. Amen. And it reads, Oh, the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. For who have known the mind of the Lord, or who have been his counselor, or who have given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again, for of him, and through him, and to him, all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. This morning, our scripture from Romans 11, 33 through 36 is talking about the one and only, our God. So I want to use for a subject this morning, there is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. There are no gods in the world that can do the things that our God did. There are no gods in the world that can do what our God does. And there's no gods in the in this world that can try to even emulate anything that he has done. We serve the almighty God. The one that's able to do all things but fail. There's a scripture over in Ephesians. You've heard us read it many a time from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, for our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. So that lets us know that there is nothing, absolutely nothing that our God cannot do. His power is working on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is present within us. And so we're able to go forth and we can ask God things. And the things that we've been thinking about in our minds, God already knows about it. And so we can come to him and know that he's able to work all these things out for our good. As we look at the things of the world today, as we see what's going on all around the us, we know that we need God's help. The war going on in Ukraine now is happening. The people being ravished right now. The pandemic that's been going on now for more than two years. All these things that happened, I believe that God is truly trying to get our attention. But the world is not paying attention to what is going on around about them. They're only looking out for themselves. But we need to be looking out for the things of God. And when we look out for the things of God, we recognize that God is working things out on our behalf. That he's doing that. And even as we're praying, we're praying that God will move. We're praying for those in position of authority. We lift up our president. We lift up those leaders all around the world. They need to recognize that they need God. They need to recognize that God is in control. They think they are in control, but God is in control. And so we just got to give way unto him to, to do what he wants to do. And I believe as we give God, if we give way to God, God can restore the land. God can heal the land. He'll forgive our sins, he says over in 2 Chronicles. 714. He'll do those things on our behalf. But we, the people of God, have to come to a point in our lives where we're going to seek God in everything. Not in a part of it, but in all of it. And he wants us to extol him. We extol the old Lord God because you are God and you are worthy of all the praise, glory, and honor that we could ever give. When you think about God's greatness, it's we're singing that song Nobody greater than he. When you think about God created the heavens and the earth, he created it out of nothing. There was nothing there. That's just how big our God is. From the beginning, you go back to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There is no God like him. And so when we're going through the things that we're going through in this life, we need to go to the one that's able to take care of those things, the one that created the heavens and the earth. The psalmist says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. When we go to God, God is able to give us whatever it is that we stand in need of. Amen. We were talking on Saturday night, just last night, when we finished up the Bible, and two of my sisters was over there just having a good time in the Lord, talking about what God had done, the things that God had, had did in the midst. Well, God is still able to do that even today. It's another day. 
But the God that we serve is the God of today. And he can do things today that he did yesterday because he is the same God. And we spoke this sermon a few months back. But I want you to understand that as we begin to seek the face of God, we can find him. And I think this is the problem with the world today. Many are seeking, but they don't know who. They don't know who to seek. But I'm letting you know today that we need to seek the face of God. We need to call upon him. And the thing of it is, is that we can call upon him morning, noon, or night. He doesn't change. He's always the same. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. We need to recognize that God can do all these things on our behalf if we would just begin to trust him. And so as I'm looking at these verses, verse 33 says, all the depth of the riches, both the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Paul is writing here, he's writing this book, and he's considering who God is. And all he can begin to do is begin to praise God because he sees all the things that God has done. He recognizes the glory of God. And so when he considers this, he's saying, you know, what can we do? What can we say? His wisdom is beyond our wisdom. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You, you begin to think about this scripture over in Isaiah 55, I believe it's 8, 9. He says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. Oh, we can't even begin to fathom or understand the, the, the bigness of our God. He is so big. And if we, we just begin to recognize just how awesome he is, we'll begin to bow down before him. We'll begin to reverence him. We'll begin to lift up holy hands to him because there is no other God like him. And so when you think about gods of the world, you can talk about Muhammad, you can talk about uh, whatever other names you want to come up with that's out there. But there's no God like him. The God in whom we serve carries us. He provides for us. He takes care of us. But what can you say about the God of this world? Some people have to carry their gods. You know, they carry them around with them. But the God we serve carries us. And so we recognize he carries us. We understand that anything that we're facing, God is already there. Even as we pray our prayers throughout the course of the week, and we're praying daily. We're praying daily for our military service members. We're praying daily for the people that we work with, the people that we work for. We're praying that God will move in the midst of the workplace because there are so many things that's going on in the world today. The word of God is under attack. The people of God are under attack. But we need to recognize who we are in Christ Jesus and make our vote and stand for him because he's standing for us. Amen. This is the God in whom we serve. And there is no other God like him. Paul is saying, you know, we can plan out the scenarios and we can try to figure out what we're going to do. But, you know, what can we plan? What can we plan? You know, when you begin to think about how big God is, he turns his to Job. He says, where were you at when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you? You know, we want to try to plan, but what can we plan without God? We don't even know what's going to happen on tomorrow. Amen. And when you go back to the scripture over in Matthew chapter 6, we were talking about in 33 where it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things we add unto you. But we're worried about how we're going to try to figure it out. How are we going to do this? We're going to try to plan it out ourselves. Well, again, we don't know. So what we should be saying is, if it be your will, Lord, mm -hmm. do this, do that. You know, whatever God's will is, that's what we need to be praying. What your will is, not my plan, not your plan, but God's plan. And as we begin to follow God's plan, everything will work out good for us. So what Paul was saying is, you know, this great wisdom that God has, this knowledge that he has, we can't even begin to fathom it. You know, it's beyond our thought process. God is so great. He, my children used to sing a song in church with the title was, My God is so big, so strong and mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. And I'm talking about they were, they were little bitty little kids. They, they were going with it, you know. They were singing this song because that's how they recognize God. He's big, he's strong, he's mighty. There is nothing he can't do. And I thank you, praise God for that even today. Because he's the same God today. Able to take care of everything that we're facing and going through even today. But don't you sometimes think it's strange when man tries to sit down and we have the word of God that's written out to us and we're trying to analyze it. We're trying to figure out 
in our own mind what God is trying to say, and we come up with our own uh, conclusion. But God is the one that wrote this word. And so we've got to trust that he knows everything. He knows things that we don't know. And so we just got to begin to open ourselves up and allow God to do the things that he wants to do. He formed us. We talked about this scripture on last night. He created us. He knows everything about us. And so we just need to begin to go to him and to seek his face in everything that we do and say. We need to be called upon the name of Jesus. Amen. Scripture goes on to say, but for who has known the mind of the Lord? Isaiah, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13. It says, who have directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor has taught him? You know, we, what can we teach God? Who, who are we to counsel him? He created the heavens and the earth. He made us. He formed us. He created us. He knows everything about us. Who are we to counsel him? In the book of Job, chapter 41, verse 11, it says this. Who has prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Everything belongs to God. And so when you begin to think about this, the scriptures emphasize that God's wisdom and sovereign conduct is nothing we can do to, 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 to pay it. It's nothing that we can do for him to say that we, he owes us anything. He doesn't owe us anything. He made us. So when you begin to think about this, God created us to worship him. He didn't, you know, we weren't created for him to worship us. We were created to worship him. And so we got to find our place rightfully in him. He paid a debt for us. So the debt's already paid. He doesn't owe anything. We don't owe anything as a result of what he did. He paid a debt that he did not owe. And so when you begin to think about this, it's in him, through him, all these things were made so because of what God did. The plan, our plan, needs to be his plan. See, God planned everything out for us. When he created us, he created us in, in a unique way. None of us are the same. But yet we're all part of the same body. We've given our life to Jesus Christ. You may be white, you may be black, you may be a Korean, you may be American. But in Christ, we are all one in him. And that's how we had to begin to see ourselves. Christ created us differently, but yet we are the same. And so we recognize that fact. We can come together. We can fellowship one with another. You know, I thank God for the members that come here from Sunday to Sunday, from Wednesday to Wednesday. You know, and it's just ironic when you begin to look out and you think, man, it's not a black church. It's not a white church. It's not a Korean church. It's God's church. And so we have to come to the point of realizing if we're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, we got to be loving towards one another. We have to see each other the way God sees each of us. And again, he created all of us. He knows everything about us. And when you think about it, he says, we are unique. We are wonderfully made, is how the scripture says it. We, we are blessed. We are, we are highly favored in the sight of God. And so I, I thank God for being who he is in our lives today. Just think about the world we live in. Man didn't make this world. Man didn't form this world. Man cannot create anything. Man can only make something from something that's already been made. So when you begin to think about God, you're saying, man, there's, there's no God like him. The songwriter penned the song saying, there is none like him. I love that song. There is none like him. You, you can search the whole world over and you will find none like him. How true that is. There is none like him. They can do the things that God has done and what God is doing even now. There is none. And so I thank God for being God Almighty. In him, through him, all things were made. And so it's, it's just good to be in the body of Christ. It's good to know that we are free in him. You know what? We can't be free in ourselves, but we can be free in him. And so when we recognize that we can be free in him, that means we can go forward, we can do the things that we need to do because God is working these things out for our good. Nothing can happen without God knowing about it. You know, and I say that to say, even what we're going through today, even what we are experiencing in the world today, don't you know that God already knew? He already knew about it. 
to understand that God knows the end result from the very beginning. He knows everything because he was from the beginning. Isaiah 46 and 10 says, he knows the end from the beginning. But we're going from the beginning in the natural. We're going from the beginning to get to the end. Meaning that there's a process, right? Some things we got to go through. But as we go through that process, we'll grow into the person that God wants us to be. God has a plan. He has a plan for all of our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he knows the thought that he thinks towards us, thoughts of peace and not evil, to get us to the expected end. But that means we're going to get to the end, but there are some things that are going to happen all along the way. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some storms in this life, but that's okay. God is with us, and God is going to see us through. For those that's in the military, when you went into the military, you were either an O-1 or you were an E-1. And you looked up to those that were in charge. You know, it could have been the, the sergeant major. It could have been the colonel. And, and you look at them and think, man, they got so much knowledge, so much wisdom. Well, how did they get it? It didn't happen overnight, did it? It was a span of time. From E-1 to E-9, from O-1 to, to O-8 or whatever. You know, we had to understand that there was a process that we had to go through. And so God grows, grows us. And as he grows us, he grows us to be more like him. If we have given our life to him, that should be our aspiration is to be more like him, to be like his son, Jesus Christ. And so when I'm talking about military, and I think about when I was in, old, uh, in E1 and going through the ranks, there were certain things that your sergeant did because he was a supervisor, right? And he, he, he had wisdom. He had knowledge. Just as the scriptures talk about wisdom and knowledge. It didn't happen to them overnight. It took time. And so as I'm looking at my supervisor as an E1, and I'm thinking, man, this guy's smart. You know, he, he's got a lot of wisdom and knowledge. But one day, I'm going to have to replace that supervisor, right? As you're going through the ranks, you're going to grow. And so you're thinking in your natural mind, I, I can't do this. I could never stand before people and speak before. I can't, I can't look at somebody eye to eye, you know, without backing down. But over time, you grew into that E5, that E6, that E9. You, know, you grew into that chief. You grew into that sergeant major. You grew into that general. It all took time. But it's because of God's wisdom and knowledge that has been imparted to us that we're able to go forth and do the things that we do. So it's all because of him. Understand, if it was not for God, we would not be where we are right now. And when I saw this subject, when God gave it to me, he says, you know, there is none like me. In all the earth, there is none like him. And so I began to think about the goodness of God, the greatness of God. And I began to think about the creation. You know, when you go back to Jesus, you think about it, it was, it was, it was dark, it was void. But he created it, he spoke things. He spoke it to be so. This is just how awesome our God is. You know, I say awesome because I can't think of any other words you know, in, in our English language. You know, there's nothing really to explain how God, how big our God is, how great our God is. We can say we are amazed, we are astonished. None of them do justice because of who God is. But when you think about the things that he did in our lives, and we see the bigness of our God, we see the awesome power that he, that he has, we begin to say there's none. There is none like him. You know, the gods that we think about in this world are either six foot under or they're a stone or whatever. They can't speak. They can't move. They can't do anything for you. But the God we serve, he moves. We see his creation. And we should magnify him because of his creation. We magnify him because he is the creator of the creation. The problem with the world is they're giving more uh, presence to the things of the world, the things in the world. God made it. So we should be going to him if we're standing in need of anything. God says he'll take care of it. And so we're trusting him to do that because he is God. And there is none like him. Beside him, above him, there is none other like him. And he is great. And he's great to be praised. I thank and praise God for being who he is in our lives. And we should serve him with passion. You know, we, we do a lot of things with passion. But when we begin to serve God with Pastor D, like we just keep on going. We're like the ever, ever ready bunny. We don't stop. We just keep on going because our passion is for him. I remember our youngest daughter, both of our daughters played volleyball in college. And uh, 
Our youngest girl was pretty good at basketball. Actually, I thought she was going to go to University of Tennessee to play for Pat Summer. But she said, no, I don't want to play basketball. I want to play volleyball. She said, that's my passion. And she, and she played it very, very well. You know, so much so that when she got a little bit older, she wanted to try to keep on playing, but the body doesn't want to cooperate. And somebody was saying that just on yesterday. We get older, it, it's, it's hard for us to recover the way that we used to recover. You know, I can say that now because I'm, I'm, I'm finding it out myself. I want to jump out there and run and do things I can't do anymore. You know, I don't recover as fast. And so I had to prepare. So what I do now, I do a real damn game. You know, loosen up that body to do the things I think I can do. But I'm saying this, if we would go to God, God can help us. God can do with us what needs to be done because he, he makes them all, the, you know what? God makes the difference in our life. Yeah. There are things that we think that we can't do, but God's saying that you can, and then he shows us how to do it. And we're saying, God, but I'm not as young as I used to be. I, I can't do this, but God says, I got a, a remedy for that. And if we would just begin to seek out God's face, he would show us what we need to do and how to do the things that need to be done. I'm telling you again that there is no God like our God. He knows how to take care of us. I think about the, the, the children of Israel when they were in Egypt for those 400 years of slavery and how God brought them out and how he gave them manna from up above and how he gave them water and how their clothes didn't run out in all those years they were running around in the desert. God took care of them. That's how big our God is. That's how mighty our God is. He opened up the Red Sea. They walked across on dry ground. And you begin to think about the things that God did. There is no God like him. There is no other God like him. He can do these things. And so we just got to begin to trust him. And as we trust him, we recognize just how good God is. Sometimes we, we, we want to move in such a way that we move and we don't consult God. And God is saying, I want you to consult me. I want you to come and talk with me. I want us to commune together. Before you take a step, I want you to talk to me first before you step out. Because God knows what he wants us to do. And if God directs us, and as he directs us, we follow the directions that he's given unto us. And as we follow the directions, things will work out well for us. Why? Because we're following him. Meaning that we're trusting him. And if we're trusting him, he's going to take us places because he knows we trust him. He can depend on us. Well, God is saying, I want you to depend upon each and every one of you today. All of us. He's counting on us to go forth to do his blessed will. So he's entrusting us to do that. And now we got to say, God, I'm trusting you, and I'm going to go out there with passion and do the things that you have called me for to do. Even if I can't see my way, I know that you're going to show me the way. Yeah. You know, and that's what he does. Mm -hmm. He shows us if we would just allow him to do the things that he wants to do. God wants to bless us. He wants us, he wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be seen by the world today that he's in charge of our lives. And when they recognize that we're serving somebody that's bigger than them, they're going to turn and try to figure out who is it that you know? Why are things happening so great for you and it's not happening so great for me? Well, it's because of who we know. You know, in the world, the world counts on people knowing you, per se. You know, they want you to put in a good word for them. You know some people. Can, can you look at my resume? Can you, can you fine-tune it? And, you know, and can you let somebody know that I'm applying for this particular position. That's how the world works. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm just saying if we really recognize who is in control of it all, we recognize that God is the one that makes it so. And so we trust him. We believe in him. God is great. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. You know, I, I keep going back to the revival because things happen. Uh, something happened in the midst of the revival. And I remember, I think it was on Thursday night when Pastor Lopez spoke. He spoke out a word. He spoke out a word. He was, it was like he was prophesying about this person. He called out that person's name. And he said, he called a name out and said, God got something for you. You know, he's got a job for you. This is the fourth time you're trying to get this job. He didn't know that person. But you know what? Yesterday, somebody called and said, that was for my area. Up in area one. You know, that was somebody, we heard what you said. 
He didn't know who the person was. But they said, I want you to know how big God is. That person got that job. You know, God is working. And so God confirms his word. God confirms his word. This is just how big our God is. He doesn't want us to go out there with, with no confidence. He wants us to go out there with confidence. When we're going out there with confidence, we're saying, I'm trusting the word of God. This is what he said, and I'm telling you what he said. And then you go out there, and the world begins to take notice. How Again, how did you know? How did this come across? Well, it was because of the spirit of God. Again, that's just how big our God is. Again, he'll take care of all these things. And so when you begin to think about God, and you think about our understanding, our understanding cannot compare to the things of God. And there is no other God that can compare to the God that we serve. God is unparalleled when you think about it. There is nobody like him. In all the earth, the songwriter said, there is none. And so when you begin to think about God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, his ways are higher than our ways, we can't even begin to, to fathom it. You know, it's like, man, how can this be? It's because of the bigness of the God in whom we serve. Sometimes in life we get tired. We get physically tired. We get emotionally tired. We just it's like we want to throw in the towel, head it up. Mm -hmm. But understand this, the God in whom we serve, he never gets tired. The scripture says he neither slumbers nor sleep. Right and in him there is no shadow of turning. Yeah. Our God is on the job, and we sometimes say 724. You know, you can call on him, he's always available to us. And I, and I thank God for being as big as he is because he hears all of our prayers at the same time. And don't you know, he's so big, he can answer all of our prayers at the same time. There is no God like our God. He hears and knows all the things that we're going through. He already knows. He wants us to come to him and bow down before him and lay it all out before him. He wants us to do that. Even when we feel mistreated, God can take care of us. He can turn things around for us. When it looks bad, we need to start saying this, and I'm saying this by faith, spiritually speaking. We need to begin to say, Everything is looking good. Even though in our natural eyes it's looking bad. It looks real grim. It looks overwhelming. But with our eyes of faith, we got to begin to see everything is looking good. It's looking good. It's looking good. Why can you, how can you say that? Because your faith is being activated to the point of believing that God's got this. God's going to take care of this. It's nothing that God can't do. Amen. Did not the scripture say he's able to do exceeding? Abundantly, above all that we ask for think, well, yes. Well, then it's looking good. In the spiritual realm, it is looking good. And then all of a sudden, the manifestation comes. And when that manifestation comes, it's like, God, I got what I saw in the faith realm. Now it's here. And so if you begin to see how God responds, how he responds to your calls, your prayers, don't you think they're going to want to be a part of that too? Tell me who it is that you know. Tell me, I want to know who made this so. As we're, again, in the revival, there was a man who was in the back, just got here from Japan. We, we knew him there. Now, I've been here for, my wife and I, we've been here now. This is year 17 for the church, 18 before we started the church. That man was in Japan for 21 years. Now, I'm telling you how good God is. My sister that works in CPAC, she's in, in the HR world. Five years, you got to go. But God says, I got something for you to do. I need you to stay. But the world says, well, no, you can put the extension in, but you're not going to get approved. But we're going to see what God has to feel about that. Because see, God has the way of dealing with man. Amen. God is the authority. Now, here it is. He's not Japan. 20-something years, 21 years of being straight in Japan. And all of a sudden, Yo, know, they say, well, you got to go back to the states and restart your clock. Well, here he is in Korea, still overseas. That's how big God is. When God says everything else has to fall in line. Amen. Amen. Because God is in control. Mm -hmm. And when we recognize that God is in control, everything will work out for our good. 
Again, we don't need to worry. God's going to take care of it. Turn with me over to Isaiah chapter 40. Four verses there that I want to read out. And, and I know many of us probably know these, these verses of scripture by heart. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse number 29. It says, He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But what does verse number 31 say? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. See, God is in control. God will take care of his creation. We are part of his creation. And all these things that we stand in need of, God will provide. The creature is rightly related to the creator. God created all of us. He's the one that's blessing us. He's the one that's taking care of us. He's the one that's enabling us to do the things that we do. So again, I, I know sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we feel like we're forgotten. But in the eyes of God, you're never forgotten. He knows who you are. The scripture says he knows your name. Yeah. That's, that's saying something. He knows your name. And you know, and we, <clears throat> when your name is called out, that lets you know that you're recognized. Now, all of us have been, have been in school, still in school, going to school right now. And when you're sitting in school and the professor calls your name out, Raymond or Mike, you look up. He has your attention, right? He calls your name. But that's how it is in the body of Christ. God knows your name. And when he calls you out, he's expecting you to respond to his call. He's expecting you to answer. That's how it was in school, right? The teacher called on you, she gave you a question, and she was waiting on you to respond with an answer. Sometimes we were hesitant. You know, we, we weren't sure if we knew the answer. But in Christ, Jesus is the answer. And so we continue to look to him and to know that he's going to make a way for us. Again, God is communicating with all of us, and all we got to do is listen to his call, and he'll work all of these things out for our good. Again, there is no other God like our God. In closing, I want to go to the scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. And it reads, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Let's go out. Let's love on one another. Let's treat each other right. Let's do what God would do in this situation. What his son Jesus Christ would do in this situation. He would show love. We show love. And we go forth and do the things that God is saying for us to do. Understand that we serve a mighty God. A wonderful God. A loving God. A forgiving God. There is none like him. There is none like him. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just not his for word of prayer. Hallelujah, God. Father God, we come before you right now. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being our Savior. God, no matter what we may face in this world, oh God, we know that you are greater. There is no other God like you, God, in all the world. And so, God, we come before you right now, God. We bow down before you. We lift up holy hands in the saints' word. And we say, bless, bless ye the Lord. God, for your worthy. God, I thank you right now for being the Alpha and the Omega. I thank you for being the beginning and the end. I thank you for being our all and all. God, I just pray right now that you have your way in our lives. Father, despite all the things that's going on in the world today, God, we can look to you and know that you are in control. Nothing happens, oh God, without your knowledge. 
Nothing happens with God without you knowing what's going on. So God, I thank you for being the all-knowing God, the all-sufficient one, the all-powerful one. God, you are all that we would ever need and more. So God, we trust you today. We say have your way in our lives even the more. God, we pray for all of our family members, God. We're praying right now, God, that they all would be saved in Jesus' name. That's our prayer, God. We don't want to see anyone left behind, God. We want to all be called up to be with you. And so, God, I just pray right now that we go out and we share your word, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that the world needs to hear today, that they can make that informed decision to follow after you. God, have your way today in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for what you're doing right now. And I thank you, God, for the things that you shall do. If you allow us to live any longer, God, the things that you shall do in the midst, God, have your way. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that we come together and we allow you to do in us what you want to do, God. That we can walk forth in freedom, walk forth in liberty, no longer bound, oh God, but being set free by you. God, to walk in it in Jesus' name. God, I thank for all of the many. Father God, the jobs that we have, God. Father, the things that you have blessed us with, our homes, God, our security in you. Everything, oh God, that we have is because of you. It came through you. It didn't come through us ourselves. It came through you. So I thank you and I praise you for that today. And I say, have your way even no more. God, I pray for that person right now that may be unsaved right now, God, but all they need to do is to make a confession. Father, with their mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised you from the dead, and they too can be saved. They can have that, that confidence in knowing, oh God, that when you come back, when you burst through the sky, Father, when you call us up to be with you, they too can be in that number. God, I pray that you have your way in Jesus' name. God, again, I pray for everyone that's here in the sanctuary, for those that's on the air right now, God. I pray that you move by your spirit in each and every one of us, God. That we will go forth, go forth with passion. That we will let the world know that we are a child of the king. That we are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood of God, a chosen generation. This is who we are, God. Let us hold up that standing, God. Let us hold up, oh God, the inheritance that we have in you. God, I think that we not live below the standard because the world needs a standard to look to, to look at. You are the standard, God. And you are working through us, your people. So, God, we thank you right now for the things that you are doing. Father, we just perish you. And I thank you, God, for the blessing of the Holy Spirit that's with us even now. Yeah. For he reigns within us. He lives yeah. within us. God, have your way in us. For we can do nothing without you. God, we acknowledge that right now in Jesus' name. We need you. We need your strength to be able to make it from day to day. God, I thank you right now for healing our bodies. I thank you that we walk in a newness of life. And though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. God, so we can call upon you daily. We can seek your face daily because we know, God, that you hear the prayers of the righteous and that they are better as much. Have you with us even the more, God. Again, we thank you and we praise you for all the things that you do. Father, be glorified in the lives that we live. And God, I thank you for bringing Brother and Sister Abel's back, God, and for our visits from North from New Mexico, God, you brought in, God. I just thank you and praise you for them being here today, God. I thank you that you to a meet their need, whatever their need may be, God. Settle them, oh God, while they're here to go forth and do the thing that you have called them forth to do, God. For even though we go to a different land, God, Father, we're not TY from you. We're with you. We're with you. We know that you're with us. And so, God, we want to continue to go forth to do your blessing will. Have your way in our lives, even the more. Again, we give you glory honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It says that you remember all of our announcements for the course of the week, Wednesday Bible study, and again, Sunday school on Sunday morning, men's fellowship on the second Saturday, women's fellowship the last Friday of the month. Remember those announcements as we come together and uh, allow God to have his way. Meet and greet uh, as we close out today. And again, just thank and praise God for being where we are right now and give you the glory for all these things. Let us stand as we are. Pray to close out. Amen. Father God, again, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for your word that is going forth. We pray that it is laid on good ground and take root thereby, and we will continue to grow in spirit and in truth. We thank you and praise you, God, for
Quick us now, Spirit of God, to be where we are today, to give you glory, the honor, and the praise that you would do. God, I thank you for being our God, our God. And Father, there's none like you, Father. We thank you. We can come boldly before your throne of grace and lay down our petitions before you with thanksgiving, knowing, oh God, that you hear our prayers, that you will respond in Jesus' name. God, have your way even the world. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide his work now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Be blessed because you are blessed. Amen.